Hello, everyone. Uh, so this is Mr. Natasha. Uh, I'm Dr. Chaban, researcher from Hong Kong. So here we'll present you with our first class video on smallpox vaccination. Okay. Did you know smallpox is a bit a disease that seems to know all over the world? On average, three out of ten people with smallpox would die, and most of these victims are due to the children, possibly because the children have over here immune than adults. These deaths were extremely common because the people didn't have the right way of treating the disease. But amazingly, to this day, smallpox has been completely wiped out thanks to the use of vaccination. So, let's get vaccination a good run for pause. But do you know how? Well, I'll tell you all you need to know about the history of vaccination. Hold on, Natasha. Before we talk about history, how about let's talk about science? A vaccine is a biological training that gives the body's immune system the ability to recognize a specific type of pathogen without having the risk of exposing to actual disease. It consists only a weakened form, a dead form, an antigen, or the DNA of the antigen. After entering the body, the immune system will treat the vaccine as a real version of the disease and start to fight back. In the end of the fight, the body learns how to destroy antigen and spawn B memory cells to prepare for the actual infection in the future. The immune system can learn from their own disease. Oh, like you, Chang Ho! Okay, that explanation might sound a little bit unbelievable for some of you, and you want to hear the detailed scientific explanation for it. So here it is. Your antibodies, which are small protein molecules produced by lymphocytes or uh, the, B, the B cells, fight off the antigens to prevent infection every day in your life. And they are so efficient, you can't even feel sick because some pathogens are actually invading your body. However, the most deadly disadvantage of antibodies is that they can only activate when the antigens are being recognized by the immune system. The B memory cell, which means the body can only fight back after a days after a few which means the body can only fight back after a few days after realizing that the infection is caused by the new antigens. However, fatal diseases such as smallpox um, can end your life in a short amount of time. So what the vaccines actually do is help your body's immune system to recognize the antigens of the deadly disease and allow the antibodies to defeat the invaders before they even have the chance to cause serious infection. Hmm, very interesting. Well, thank you, Dr. Chavin. As I was saying about history before, back before vaccination was founded, the people in the late 1700s used the vaccine method to treat smallpox. This includes a patient who had never caught smallpox with or inhaled smallpox sores. They were granted minor symptoms of smallpox, and when they healed, they would be immune to smallpox. Although it's not guaranteed that you will survive from the variolation method, variolation was a very risky method to use, but it prevented more death than those who caught smallpox naturally. Now let's move closer to the founder and discovery of the smallpox vaccination. Dr. Edward Jenner is an English doctor who made the discovery of the very first successful vaccination. He grew up in Berkeley, England, but he was trained in London and proceeded to his career back in Berkeley. Starting in the year 1796, Jenner decided to do an experiment based on one of the changes that were recently made from the small floor in the countryside, which concluded that introducing the body to Abyssinia prevented very low virus from appearing. They heard that a milkmaid caught cowpox and afterwards seems to be immune to smallpox. So Jenner experimented on James Fitz. Fitz is, a, is an eight year old boy whose father works for Jenner. He started by putting in a pus of a uh, cowpox pus tool into the boy's arm. Later, did you know, Fitz did get better and was immune to smallpox. He submitted a paper to be published based on his findings, but people wanted more evidence. So he looked for more evidence, and he experimented again and again and again, including his 11 months done. That's insane. He experimented, it's such a risky thing to do. At the, age of, at the age of 11 months, something could have gone wrong. He took the risk and he proved the theory. His son lived. And after two years of more research and experiments, in 1798, Jenner finally published his paper on vaccination. But in the time it was the 18, 1800s, after more research had been done, the method of relation had been had been changed to vaccination and the cowpox virus to be injected into the system had been replaced with a minor version of the cowpox virus. Then in the year 1959, WHO attempted to make to make vaccinations be done globally in order to try to get rid of smallpox completely in the rate of 80% vaccinations in each country. But this failed because many countries lacked money, commitment, and vaccine donation. Two years later, in 1961, the bifurcated needle was found. It is a tool found that would make vaccinations more efficient and cost effective. Using the bifurcated needle, only one form of the vaccine was needed to compare to the previous method. So, the global vaccination was attempted once again in 1967, but this time North America had already eradicated smallpox back in 1962 and Europe in 1963, leaving Asia, South America, and Africa to eradicate smallpox in the 1970s. For Oceania, smallpox was not known to be a widespread, so no data has been reported. And that is how today's smallpox disease no longer exists around the world. Although there is still remains of smallpox virus for research, but there have been no outbreaks reported since 1978. First of all, I, I'm going to talk about a smallpox virus. Smallpox is caused by a virus which can be separated into two forms. Variola major virus and Variola minus virus. The major ones are large brick shaped viruses with spikes around them. That was just a, big, a brief description of the virus. But the best part is when it infects your body. Let's see how it works. The virus, like any other virus, will need to reproduce in a host cell, which can only be provided by humans. The virus is spread by droplet transmission. When it enters a person, the through nose or mouth, the first invades the cells and clothes and makes the millions of copies of the cell. Then those viruses will attack other organs of the body. People that are infected 
develop symptoms of fever, vomiting, and horrible rashes. The infection is so severe that the virus might even destroy your entire organ and you will suffer to death. To this way, all the patients died in less than two weeks of the infection, while those that survived the disease were left with scars for the rest of their lives. The virus does not disappear after the infection. It still exists inside the host's blood, the blood and scars, waiting for the next weekend. The smallpox had taken 30 to 15 million lives just in the 20th century alone. Now you can see why it is considered as the most deadliest disease known to human history. In general experiments, the smallpox plus prevent the disease successfully because cowpox and smallpox are similar type of viruses that have the same antibody recognition sites. When the immune system learns how to fight off cowpox viruses, they also become capable of destroying the smallpox virus by producing the same type of antibodies. Hello everyone, I'm going to talk about short and long-term consequences of smallpox vaccination. As a common knowledge, use of vaccine could possibly stop smallpox. The effect of first-time vaccination can last about 3 to 5 years. Second dose can may last then to 10 to 20 years. And it's observed that vaccines introduces more risk than benefits it brings. A group of people are vaccinated, such as healthcare workers, army and security forces, and for other emerging entities. Uh, from the financial side of vaccination situation, it costs a lot of money to destroy smallpox, and a lot of money is also needed for public education and monitoring vaccination effects on population monitoring involves checking medical history, history and storage of the vaccination in healthcare facilities. The good side of the story is that vaccination made a large part of the population have immunity to smallpox, so vaccination also decreased the treat of vaccines being used as biological weapon. However, in poor countries, one third population is still facing risk. Now we are going to talk about the new advancement in cre creating new type of vaccines. First generation of vaccines were used to destroy smallpox infections. Uh, it was made from skin of the animal. The second generation of vaccines was produced in the tissue cell. Third generation of vaccines was based on the copying the smallpox virus. WHO has stored all three types of vaccines. However, WHO still have, has to de decide how much of each type of vaccines should be stored. GACS is the special committee of WHO that was received the safety of all three types of vaccines. GECBS is responsible for the review and update of vaccine storage and use. Thank you for watching the first course video.